Guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and I've got another video in my series uh, on introducing you to Reason. So today, I want to talk about automation in Reason. And there's a bunch of different ways you can do automation in Reason. That's one of the great, great uh, features that Reason has. Um, it's sort of, there's no wrong way to skin a cat um, when it comes to automation, but I'm going to show you a few of my favorite ways of doing it. Um, so this is still a sketch of a song that I've been working on. I'm a bit, it combines a loop, some uh, samples, and some keys at the moment. It'll probably involve other stuff later, um, but we'll give it a quick playthrough and then I'll show you some automation that we're going to add and I'll show you how it's done or how you can approach it. So let's take a quick listen. Okay, so that's basically the idea behind it. Um, probably needs more ideas than that, but um, I don't really show I don't, I don't really show finished songs in here. It's just sort of sketches to give you guys an idea um, to illustrate certain techniques that I want to show you. So let's go to the mixer first. So I'm going to hit F5, and this should take me to the mixer. Um, now, right now, I don't have any send effects, but this can be a great way of adding color, a great way to use um, basically just to use automation to enhance tracks. Now I made a whole video about using send effects the correct way um, and that's how I normally do it. I normally don't do effects until the mixing stage and this song is still in the writing stage so I don't have that um, mixing template up. I'm using just my regular writing template. So just for simplicity's sake, we'll go to the um, mix to the rack window, right click and hit new or create send effect. And what I'll do is, um, you know, let's do let's do a scream. I always love the scream. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna tie. So, I, don't know, I did it as an audio track, so that's not what we want. We'll just do it separate. Um, I don't think that worked quite the way I wanted it to work. So we'll just hold down Shift, create a scream, and then, okay, really. So we're gonna, uh, all right, so this is going to create a send effect the right way. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on here. Um, so. It's not. So what we want to do is just do the input here and the output here. We need a mix channel, not an audio channel to do it. Um, and let's let's just do that. I'll do it. I'll illustrate it. So you cr go to utilities, create a mix channel. Um, and I did a video describing the difference between mix channels and audio tracks and all of that. So I'm gonna hold down shift and drag this inside. So now the input for this mix channel is the first effects send, and the output is the first effects return. And then you can have a bunch of different effects in here. So what I want to do is a delay. Well, we've got the scream distortion, and then after that, what I want to do is put um, a synchronous, and we're going to use it for the reverb. Um, and let's just see if we can find a... Um, Let's do this guy. Um, and so we'll call this delay effect. And at some point, I am going to make a video on the order of effects. But that's probably going to be a multi-part video. Um, and that's in response to a, uh, to one of your requests. And I'm definitely going to do that. It's just there's a lot to say there. Um, and it'll take a few videos. So I want to finish this beginner series. And then we'll get into order of effects and some other fun stuff. Um, so. Now let's just go here and we've got delay as the first effect send and it doesn't show up as an, um, I guess it is showing up as an effect return, but it's really over here on this channel. Um, right, we don't want to do it as a return. That's why, because it's already on a channel. Um, so if we send,
a channel. If we send something, if we click on the effect send one, it will send it to this delay channel here and that'll start to mangle it. So to automate, you can right click and hit edit automation or you can hold down alt while clicking on a button and then what you do is you get to the, it automatically takes you to the sequencer window and then you can either hold down the alt button again and I'm not sure what, the, what it would be on a Mac or hit W to select a pencil tool or just click on the pencil tool and what we're going to do is it created the FX1 send lane here. That was just created by hitting alt and clicking on the tab. So now we're going to draw in a section here and just what this does, the first step, and it sucks that it's two steps, but first you have to draw in an area that represents the region that you want to automate. So I drew in this section. Now I'm going to double click on it and we'll zoom in a bit. And now we'll select the pencil tool again by hitting W. And now we actually have to draw in the specific automation we want in that region. So now if we play it, you'll hear it kicks on for just a sec. And so what you can do is you can, um, just for simplicity, you can do copy and paste, control C, control V. And we'll put a bunch of those here, but we'll put them in different spots and have different lengths. And this will add a bit of movement to the song. Obviously, it'll probably sound way better if you actually think about where you put it <laughs> instead of randomly dragging it over links, but this is uh, purely for educational purposes. So now let's listen to it. And you can hopefully hear it kicking in each time. So that's the first step, but what I want to do is contrast this with another way that automation sort of works. So certain things are only um, bi or tri-directional. Um, so the effect send only has two positions, on or off. If you go and look at something like a scream, this has actually three positions, bypass, on, or off. Um, and then like a knob would have everything in between, you know, type might only have five. So what you need to do when you look at the sequencer is you have to keep that in mind. So when it's just on or off, I drew in the top meaning on and all the rest of the time it's off. So when you begin to set your automation, you want to set it, you want to have it at the default setting before you start automation before you start drawing in automation because um, that will make all the spaces where you don't have automation just be where you normally want it. Um, and this isn't as big of a deal with some things, but let's say, um, and this is just, we'll just do this as a quick example. This is the amount of the effects and that's what that knob controls. So let's listen to it with all the way up. So it's a much more extreme effect. And let's say if I now Alt click it to automate it. Well, now by default, the amount is way up here. And so um, it basically shifts the baseline. Or if it had been at the bottom when I went to automate it, it would be the other way around. Um, so now what I'm doing on this channel is drawing in the amount of the send, which will create a little bit more movement. So let's listen to these two now. All right, now let's look at it from another angle. We'll go to the rack knob. And so what you have to realize is that synchronous is actually in many ways a form of automation. This is one line here. This yellow line is automation that basically increases the frequency of the filter as it goes up. This purple line here um, is you can see these knobs here wherever you see purple it's basically changing the time of the delay and this blue pattern here is automation 
for the feedback. Um, so synchronous is another way you can sort of do miniature automation. It's these curves, but that keep repeating. Um, and they can affect effects. They can automate effects that are built into synchronous, or you can use the CV curves to send it out. But what I'm trying to talk about today is not CV voltage automation, which is a, I just did a video on this, but this is more manual automation, which you do more um, based on like actually mixing and that sort of thing. So another way that you can do automation if you've got a MIDI keyboard um, sorry I'm just moving my mic to get my keyboard in place um, is if I let's say um, let's see which one it is. It's actually the drum beat. <laughs> um, so let's see if I can control this guy now synced to this screen delay. So I'm going to turn a knob on my keyboard. You won't be able to see that, but you'll see some of these knobs moving. You see P2 moving now? There. You see that? Right, right here. Hopefully I'm recording in 1080p. I might not be. Um, so another way that you can alter automation is just by hitting the record button and moving a control surface. So that's P1 and P2. So there's no lane for them yet, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit record. No send yet. Um, so, sorry, I'm going to slip in the middle of that. Um, so, you couldn't hear that for most of the time because there was no send. Uh, the send wasn't active. But this was the automation I drew in for two different parameters. Um, and now let's hear it. So, not incredibly, incredibly audible, but that's another way you can draw in automation. And plenty of times it will be way more than audible. Um, if you want to do volume fades or um, all right, so we've got this drum loop here. Um, so I'm controlling it with my keyboard, but what I'll do is I'll use a pitch bend just so you can hear it really obvious. So, I was using my pitch bend on my keyboard there to control the automation of the pitch knob um, of the Dr. Rex. Um, and I don't know where that is right now. Um, you see, this is where it would be great if there was a button you could hit that could take you to this rack channel. Um, but, um... Okay. So, yeah, okay. so when whenever there's green around something, that means that it's automated. Okay. Come into the automated section. So that's another way you can do it. And then let's say you don't completely like all of the bends you move, or you can just double click here and you'll see there's the pitch. It's hard to see, unfortunately. Um, but there's all these little dots here which represent the pitch bends. So you can come in and draw different automation if that's what you wanted, um, if you masked it up. Um, so these are like probably the two most useful ways of doing actual automation. And this is how I usually go for it in Reason. Um, there are also ways of having, there's a lot of different ways of having one parameter effect 
multiple parameters, but really what I wanted to talk about today is just drawing in performance data um, or recording automation data. Um, this hopefully was helpful to you. If you're enjoying this, um, I've got a Patreon channel where you can uh, get mixed critiques and do one-on-one -on -one lessons or group lessons and also get advanced um, video courses and things like that. There's a link down below to that and be sure to like and subscribe because this beginner series um, is not finished yet. There's going to be a few more videos, but then we'll take it to some more advanced and interesting places. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this and have a good